On the news tonight, INEC releases names of presidential and national assembly candidates. And in business, federal government, state, local government shares 698.7 billion naira for September. And on the foreign scene, security officials arrest suspects linked to U.S. mail bombs. Good evening and welcome to the Super Screen TV flagship news, reaching you live from a studio here in the commercial capital, Lagos State. I am Kiruka Ibe and now the news in full. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has released its provincial list of candidates for presidential and national assembly elections. This is in line with Section 31 of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended, which states the commission shall, within seven days of the receipt of the provincial particulars of the candidates, publish name same in the constituency while the candidates insist and contest the election. The list was pasted at its headquarters as well as its offices across states of the Federation. Among presidential candidates on the list are President Muhammad Dubwari, APC, Atiku Abubakar, PDP, Obedai of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, Donald Duke of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and Olushe Gumimiko of Zenit Labour Party, ZLP, amongst others. For presidential elections, 79 political parties are nominated as candidates. 79 political parties. For the Senate, out of 89 parties that fill the candidates, we have a total of 1,800. And three candidates vying for 109 senatorial seats. 1,803 candidates in 360 February constituencies. But as I promised to give you the details, at the end of this day, including the breakdown of which party has fielded one number of candidates for one type of election. This is only for the presidential and national assembly, meaning Senate and House of Representatives. When we hold the ship, and we will hold down the ship elections in 29 states, and then state assembly elections in 991 constituencies. So we provide this little breakdown to you later. Thank you. And still talking about the Independent National Electoral Commission, which says the 2019 registered voters will be displayed at various polling units across Nigeria on the 6th of November 2018. The electoral body who disclosed this on its social media handle said the commission will appreciate the assistance of citizens in identifying deceased persons on the register so that such names can be gnawed from their record. He, INEC also urged citizens to help the commission during the display, adding that full details of the procedure for collecting citizens' observations will be released later. And the immediate past Commandant General of the National Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSD, NSCDC, Ade Abolori, has called on Nigerians to protect government infrastructure in their locality at all times. Abu Lorim made the call today at a security conference organized by the Institute of Security in Nigeria, NHIS, in Lagos State. The nation critical infrastructure provides the essential services that underpin the whole society and serve as the backbone of the nation's economy, security and national development. The importance of protection of protecting infrastructure has greatly increased in recent years. We can see from government and international agencies and organizations about those assets, systems, and functions vital to smooth and safe and peaceful operation of society, critical infrastructures, including those of physical resources, services, and information technology, networks, and infrastructural assets. And this has gone in a long way towards affecting other stakeholders spoke in the same vein, appealing for sense of ownership by citizens. There is need for us to look at 
how to protect these critical infrastructures that are, you know, the bane of our existence as a nation. If anything happens to them, that's the end of the nation. For example, the port industry, Nigeria is uh, an import-dependent nation. If the port is not protected, Nigeria is finished. So the need to, you know, for security professionals to put heads together and see how to protect this infrastructure, very, very important, as well as other national assets, like the pipelines and all that, which are very, very important for our existence as a nation. Most of our critical infrastructure system is a cake or is none in existence in the system. So we are not creating awareness that the go government should focus its attention on critical infrastructure system and possibility of recovering them. The United Nations building, which seems to be the starting point of terrorism in Nigeria, is being reoccupied about now. So we could see, the, we could feel the terrible effects of infrastructure, or what is critical infrastructure in, in nations something. Because with that bombing that we had at that time, that put security rating in Nigeria very low. And no international organization, the advice permanent in the United States is that you should not come to Nigeria unless it's essential for you to do so. Away from that now and still looking at matters arising from the Kaduna killings. Reactions have continued to trade the killings in Kaduna State. Security experts who spoke with Super Screams Michael Semeke condemned the continuous attack and urged the federal government to immediately intervene. Speaking at this forum where security experts converged for a professional meeting, the violence rocking the northern part of Nigeria, precisely Kaduna State, where over 50 persons have been killed, was brought to the fore. While they condemned the continuous attack and the governor, Nasir El Rufai's lip service, they urged the federal government to wade in through dialogue. Kaduna has been a reoccurring decimal, and I'll tell you that it's a as a result of leadership indulgence, um, forgetting the fact that Kaduna is a, is a distinctly clear state that is comprised of uh, the Muslims and the Christians. Distinctly, you know, um, the Satan Kaduna is predominantly Christians, and um, you have Muslim predominantly in the northern part of Kaduna. Unfortunately, the incumbent governor is not um, you know, governing the state like a governor that is meant for all. We need to begin to take people, make people to be accountable until we start doing that. No amount of soldiers, no amount of curfew, no amount of security emergency meeting, no amount of police deployment will bring about peace. It was also a time for these experts to weigh the advantages of private security companies synergizing with telecommunications company for effective security. Looking at the investment that have been pumped in into this country, over $63 billion that has been in this country from telco point of view globally, it is extremely important for us to keep this asset right. Not only that, because the economy itself depends on this telco. Telco industry contributes over 10% of the GDP quarter and quarter. So getting these people, getting, sorry, getting the professional bodies, understanding the need for them to support us in keeping this asset is of a great advantage to virtually everybody. So that is one of the things that we want them to understand, that they are key partner here and a major stakeholders. Telecommunication is a key challenge in security, providing security in a country. You know, and we, are, we have seen situations where we needed to have communication details, intelligence gathered from communication devices, communication platforms, and there is this challenge of timeliness. You know, if you look at kidnapping now, for an example, you know, so but we also understand that they had their own challenges too. You know, challenges of protecting the mass, the hardware, the software, and the enabling laws. The advanced countries are already moving in that direction. The question is, are we prepared to even embrace this technology when it comes? And what are the fundamental things that um, are required to make us to be ready? and that is the telecoms. 
So, and it's one area that we feel that has, we're having a lot of challenges. So if you can't get it right, having a strong telecom base, then we are not yet prepared for, for the advancement in technology that is, uh, that is uh, already going to be sweeping all over the, the world. No doubt, security is everybody's business and whatever that would enhance security must be embraced. Mike Usemeke reporting for Super Screen News. Away from that, the lawmaker representing Zamfara Central Senator Red District, Kabiru Marafa, has faltered the protest calling for the removal of the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC Adam Soshomole. Marafa, in a statement issued in Abuja, said the protesters were mobilized by Governor Abdulaziz Yari following his inability to bend rules to impose candidates who are his cronies on the party in the state. According to him, the money allegedly spent by Yari to organize the protesters should have been channeled towards securing the release of 17 persons, including two young girls kidnapped in Duran, Jengbe, Magami, and other locations in the state. And looking at Nigeria's economic development, Nigeria needs to expose numerous benefits in technology and use them to improve her economy. This appeal was made by entrepreneurs at the next CEO conference held in Lagos. Ola Super Screens Olamide Omuka tells us more. Speaking at the next CEO conference, which brought together students and stakeholders in the technology and business world, the speakers, one after the other, say there are areas begging to be explored. For them, there is need for Nigeria to harness the profits in technology, saying that information communication technology is the future of the world. I believe uh, our nation um, lacks the technological infrastructure that we need to walk into the future that we should be walking into, um, partly because our leaders do not understand its importance, do not understand technology one. So for students here, there are a few things that came up during conversations. Uh, one, how to network, uh, the importance of leveraging the network you have, leveraging um, communities around you and building out your network to, to pursue the things that you want to do. The CEO conference is a new innovation in the ideas being imparted into our students for greater tomorrow. We are training them to become employers of labor, not job seekers, because we feel this will be the, uh, to their own interest. Uh, the program is very, very important because we know that we have unemployment in Nigeria, and the earlier we get our students to uh, get to understand that there's a need for them to think outside the box, and begin to think of how they can impact society, creating jobs them, the, for, the, the, for themselves, and also being employers of labor. What they've been doing, trying to do here is that they're trying to even inspire and even develop existing techpreneurs in a school community, in a campus community like this. This is Yaba College of Technology, so it's a technological um, higher institution. So it means that you would get a whole lot of young guys interested in technology and future entrepreneurs or current entrepreneurs in this in this kind of event or in this kind of program they also gave the experience of turning points to young entrepreneurs and students present i would like to commend the organizers at first for um, having the boldness and the readiness to come up with this initiative um, in the couple of uh, in the distant future in a couple of moments after now we would like to support initiatives like this we would like to be part of events or programs that support tech businesses or techpreneurs. The dream of every child is to be self-sufficient and um, be a creator of um, a job and uh, to be the next CEO. With this kind of a uh, program, our children are trained, I mean, are uh, mentored. We invite people that have gone into, gone into fields like this to come and mentor our students. I want to say Definitely an awesome job today by the organizers. Uh, this is extremely crucial and important uh, in preparing our young people, especially Yabatech is supposed to be um, the, the premier technolo uh, technology institution, high institution in the nation, if not in Africa. Um, so things like this is extremely crucial to preparing our students and creating opportunities for them, but also in connecting them with other people who have already walked the path that they are looking to walk. Keep doing that thing you're doing, 
the focus on it. Sometimes money might not be the issue you have, but just one clear thought in your business plan. And voila, you have a business that will thrive and employ other people. So don't give up the fight for entrepreneurship. It is often said that every business is a risk. However, for aspiring entrepreneurs as these students, they have been given a part of mentorship to follow. One would expect that they would act on the lessons. Olami Deonka reporting for Super Screen TV. And you are still watching Super Screen TV flagship news coming up in business. Federal government, states, local governments share 698.7 billion naira for September. There's a more to come on the business scene just after the break. You are come back now talking business. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee FAC has read shared a total of 698.10 billion naira to the three tier of government for the month of September. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed, who presided over the meeting, said the gross statutory revenue for the month stands at 569.281 billion, lower than the 627.139 billion shared in August. Ahmed said the federal government will get 265.672 billion naira, while the state and local governments get 134.752 billion naira and 103.888 billion naira, respectively. We have gross statutory um, revenue collected in the sum of 569.281 billion to be distributed while gross VAT is 79.154 billion, and we're also distributing 50 billion, which has accrued from the forex equalization account to the three tiers of government. There is an exchange gain also of 0 0.275 that is included in the distribution. So total distributable revenue to the three tiers of government is 692.71 billion naira. Meanwhile, the report of the Committee on the SS Crude Accounts ECA was stepped down and withdrawn to enable the committee rework and we present it at the next meeting. The president, federal, Nigeria's president, Muhammad Buhari, says the greatest investment Europe and America can make in Africa now is to help the continent accomplish, the, accomplish inter-basin water transfer to recharge the Lake Chad. President Buhari, who gave the charge today in Abuja, while hosting the chairman of the African Union Commission, Musa Mohammed, said Lake Chad, which provided means of livelihood for millions of people in four countries of Chad, Cameroon, Niger, and Nigeria, has now been reduced to 10% of its original size due to impacts of climate change. The president also said the people that are dependent on Lake Chad for fishing farming and animal husbandry has been out of business. And the president said, uh, has defended the recent decision to remove value added tax VAT from domestic air transportation, saying it is aimed at making air travel more affordable. The president who disclosed this at the commissioning of the new terminal of the Potakut International Airport said the removal of VAT from domestic air is to create jobs in the aviation sector. According to the president, the government's decision to change to zero VAT from domestic air transportation is in line with global best practices. And still ahead on the news, security officials arrest suspects linked to U.S. mail bombings. These are more to come on the foreign scene just after the break. You're welcome.